creepy first date. This is the first time I have ever posted in Let's Not Meet. I keep reading all these dating horror stories and it being Valentine's Day and all. It had me recall a nearly forgotten first date with a guy my friend Mark fixed me up with. I had known the guy a little because he worked with my friend at a local music store. He seemed cool and he was actually pretty good looking. The first time we had met was at an ICP concert that we had all attended. The guy who we will call Mike was pretty normal on the surface and through Mark got my number and called me. We went out on a date and as the night drew on he asked if I minded if we just go hang out at the local park and chat because we had been at a super busy loud bar that had a band playing. I was 19 and highly stupid back then so I agreed to it. It was in the summer and wasn't yet dark so I was thinking it seemed weird. As we're just chatting, he leans in and kisses me, and I look around realizing it had gotten really dark. I'm in heaven because at this point he hasn't given me any reason to think he's a creeper. We had a great night. He was charming and funny and we had a ton in common. Then, after our first kiss, he gets this creepy grin. He looks out the window, then says to me, I'm taking you in those woods and we are going to have a really good time. I kinda laughed a bit nervously because at the time I hadn't yet lost my virginity. I tell him I'd rather just stay in the car. He gets weird and angry and it's like he's two people. Why can't we just go into the woods? I promise I won't rape and kill you. By now he's trying to laugh it off, but I had gotten incredibly creeped out. I try to play it off like I'm not ready to run away. I should have been more creeped out than I was, but I was so naive. It creeps me out now writing this. He looks at me again and leans back in his seat and begins to start fake whining. Oh come on, let me just take you into the woods, it will be fun. I'm having none of this and start getting mad and I tell him I'm ready to go home. I finally talk him into just taking me home. He was oddly quiet the rest of the drive home, and then as he gets to my house he proceeds to apologize profusely about it. I heard later from my friend Mark that he said I was a tease. When I told my friend about what happened, he stopped talking to Mike, said that he had heard he can be kind of a sex maniac. How about borderline psycho? So guy I went on a creepy first date with? Let's never meet again. You're a really heavy sleeper. I'm a 36 year old woman. When I was 26, I went through a life altering, hope crushing, has anyone seen my will to live kind of breakup. To save you from reading paragraphs of heartbreak, I will sum it up by saying that it would be more than three years before I got into another serious relationship. 
and that I probably would not have survived if my precious toddler girl hadn't needed her mama. About two months after the aforementioned breakup, some female friends invited me to the very large, old, and beautiful house that the two of them rented for a 4th of July bonfire and cookout. When I arrived at the house, they told me that they had invited a guy friend who they wanted me to meet. I had seen his picture on one of their MySpace friends lists and commented that he was cute at some point before, but they promised there was no pressure. I was, after all, mostly still a raw and tragic mess at this point. In any case, the guy friend arrived and we were introduced. While he was not as cute as his profile picture, he was funny and easy to talk to. Besides, I wasn't looking for anything, so whatever. I then learned that he was quite taken with how gorgeous I was, even though he chose to tell me that he had been, in his words, nervous because I could tell looking at your profile picture that you have huge upper arms and I thought you might be a beast. He was quite the charmer, obviously. We hung out that night and when he asked for my number, I gave it to him because he seemed decent enough as a person. Fast forward two weeks or so, we've talked a little through text and instant messenger and have hung out with our group of mutual friends a handful of times. I make it very clear that I'm in no fit state for a relationship and that I can't go there if that's what he's after. He says he understands, but that he enjoys my company. Fair enough. One night, after we've been out with our group at our usual bar restaurant, I agree to go back to his place with him. We hang out, have sex like consenting adults, and go to sleep. No big deal. The next morning, we're just hanging out and chatting a bit before I have to head home. At some point, he says, You know, you're a really heavy sleeper. My initial reaction is to chuckle and agree that, yes, I sleep like the dead before I catch something sort of odd in his tone that I can't put my finger on. I say, Wait, what do you mean? He stumbles over his words a little and says, Oh, I just honestly thought you were pretending to be asleep because you were making these little noises like you were enjoying yourself. I felt like someone had poured ice water down my spine and was speechless for a moment before I said, What did you do to me? He blanched at my tone and quickly said, Nothing, really. I mean, once I realized you were really asleep, I stopped. He refused to elaborate on that statement, but I felt absolutely sickened. In the months following this, he would text me obsessively, send me messages on MySpace at all hours of the night telling me things like, Have fun getting laid, cunt. Apparently, this all stemmed from his inability to understand why I didn't want to be his girlfriend or see him anymore. He started flirting with my friends in an attempt to make me jealous and even started trying to chat up the 15-year-old sister of my best friend, except that his flirtation devolved into saying he hated her because she reminded him of me. In the end, 
his batshit behavior only stopped when one of my friends, who he said was disgusting because she was so overweight, but that she had pretty eyes, responded positively to his advances. They're still married, as far as I know. I contacted him about five years ago wanting to apologize for any pain I might have caused him. He ended up making inappropriate comments on my Facebook pictures in the middle of the night and picking weird, petty fights with my fiancé in the comments. Even though he is married to a psychiatrist, his actions made it abundantly clear that growth and rational behavior still aren't his strong suits. I now live 700 miles away from where I first met him. I moved back to my hometown two years ago. Unfortunately, I learned about a year ago that he now lives in the same state. Thinking about him still makes my skin crawl. I live in fear of him realizing that I'm a relatively short drive away, and I hope on all that is sacred that we never meet again. I was falsely accused. This happened when I was either 17 or 18. I was technically the creep in this situation, even though I never meant any harm. Before I begin this story, I need to point out that I have a few minor mental disabilities, so sometimes I can't read a situation for what it is until it's too late. God knows I've suffered for that multiple times in my life. Anyway, I used to work at a grocery store. It was rather large, so I had quite a few co-workers I barely knew. One day I was working a rush when I saw a woman talking to one of my co-workers, who I'll just call Mike. They seemed to know each other rather well, and I could have sworn I recognized her from one of the departments, so I assumed she was a co-worker on maternity leave. The reason I say maternity leave is because she was holding a baby boy who looked like he was just a few weeks old. Anyway, the woman came to my register to ring up her groceries when she was done talking to Mike. I greeted the woman with a smile and asked her the typical questions like, How are you? Or, Do you want this in a bag? I looked at the baby she was still cradling. I've always been good at taking care of kids and have helped out at camps daycares, and regular babysitting jobs countless times in the past. So I asked the typical questions about her baby as well, like, what's his name? And how old is he? When I finished ringing her up, I told her to have a good day and that was that. I later found out from Mike that she wasn't a co-worker at all, just a regular at the store. I figured that was okay, there were a lot of those, several of which I knew, and she seemed nice enough. I saw her shopping with her family quite often after that, and, like with every regular I knew, I always offered a smile and a wave when I saw them. One Saturday, I had just finished my shift and was walking out the door to my car when my mom called me and asked me to pick up some hot dogs. They were all the way at the back of the store and I was at the front, 
but I rolled my eyes and began to walk back the way I had came. I cut through one of the aisles to get there faster, and I came across a group of four people taking up the entire aisle. I recognized them as the woman and her family. I didn't want to bother them, so I tried my best to walk around them, but they were going incredibly slow, and no matter what direction I tried to go, I couldn't get around them. Looking back, I probably should have just turned around and walked through a different aisle, but I got to the hot dogs before that even crossed my mind. The family resumed walking, and I got the hot dogs, paid for them, and left the store. I worked again the next day, and of course, the woman and her family came to shop again. I smiled and waved like always and continued to work. About 20 minutes later, my manager asked if he could talk to me. I didn't think much of it, thinking he just needed my help with cleaning the bathrooms or something, and I followed him to the back room. When we got there, my supervisor was there too and I was instantly confused and nervous. To make a long story short, they told me that a woman had reported me for stalking her and trying to hurt her baby. I still remember feeling like I had just been slapped in the face as I knew instantly who they were talking about, even though I had never laid a hand on the woman or her baby. I explained my side of the situation, also making sure to mention the events of the day before when I was shopping. Luckily, I had known both my manager and the supervisor ever since I had started working at the store, so they believed me and chalked it up to the woman simply misreading the situation. The rest of that day I felt like I was going to throw up. I had come close to losing my job and had been accused of being a criminal, and I was technically still a kid. Even though I had been assured by my managers, and later my parents, that I had done nothing wrong, I still spent a good few months after that constantly fearing that someone else with a baby would think of me in that way, to the point where I couldn't even look at another child. I've since gotten over those feelings, but over the years I've learned to be more careful with what I say or do. Luckily, for the rest of the time I worked in that store, I never saw that woman or her family again.